Beautiful. So we're back. Um, and yeah, so we're looking at dating today. So if you've been following up with our series or caught up with it on YouTube, then here's the next one, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure you're all thrilled about. So um, because no one can trust me to do anything, and because it was really fun when I did this with the girls over summer, I've added in some memes this time, <laughs> because why not? <laughs> um, so enjoy this beautiful, beautiful selection of memes that I have found, but also the actual talk. Um, so yeah. Um, so you think you found somebody who you like, who loves God, and who you want to pursue a relationship with. They have the same feelings for you. You're both in a place to date. Now what? Before we get into the rest of it, here's a great meme. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it says, <laughs> when someone <laughs> you find attractive says, I'm excited to marry, <laughs> raise kids, and have Jesus at the centre, <laughs> and you're like, I volunteer. <laughs> um, I, I really like that one. It's an excellent meme. Um, so you got to this point. You're like, now what? Before we go on to that, I'll have a quick look at marriage because always important. Um, I found a Spongebob meme. There are two reactions to marriage. Either you're terrified or you're like, um, excellent. So marriage. I think this is important to look at before we look at dating because the biblical view of marriage impacts how we date, in my opinion. Uh, and that's what, I, yeah. So quick question for you all. Marriage. How is marriage different to dating? exactly it's about two becoming one um and i guess also like you normally assume that when someone's you know gonna get married that means that they're probably gonna raise a family together that's kind of the indication like this is the next step of the rest of their life um so does can anyone off the top of your head what are some of the vows that are made in marriage Does anything else change when we get married? So, so we found somebody. We're like, okay, I'm gonna marry them. What what changes? Maybe also when, you know, when you see like a hospital drama, you're like, oh no, you're not allowed in because you're not a family member or married to them. Anyway, yeah. So there's, there's all these different things that happen and like a sort of like indicators of marriage. Um, 
in marriage, love is love and marriage is all about taking on every good and bad part of that person. If that's like personality, inheritance, like money stuff, like anything like that is taking on everything for better or for worse. It kind of mirrors our relationship with Jesus. But the only difference is that he is perfectly good and has sacrificed all and we are not <laughs> um and also a disclaimer people don't really get married for eternal happiness like marriage marriage isn't going to be eternally happy um that's just not the case uh which is why jesus is the better option um we kind of talked about this already but we've got like the the two becoming one there's this like intimacy and commitment in marriage that we don't get in dating um there's 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 all of this stuff there's this one you know, like the one body stuff become one flesh um and as we said take on our, our husband's name so potentially that means that there's, there's there's a new identity and that's the same with us as our relationship with jesus because we need a new identity because without jesus we're a mess we're imperfect and this will be fully realized but even as we become a christian we have got a new identity so that's marriage marriage is like great and exciting and cool but what about let's have a look at dating so what is dating Uh, that's all very true but i think the way that christians date is slightly countercultural. um i have a an ariana meme so to go along with this um <laughs> i'm looking for a relationship <laughs> but let's just keep everything that relationship consists of as uh i can't even read upside down i continue calling my friend that's what it says it's just ariana looking very confused with some math symbols it's very excellent and as per usual, my camera's on the shirt properly. Um, yeah, I think it's slightly different. I think the way that the world does things is sort of like dating is sort of like you go on perhaps like multiple dates with lots of different people, like you might get a dating app. Um, and then once you're in a relationship, you're also dating, but also sometimes it can be a lot more serious. Um, a lot of people that I know, or even my uncle and my aunt who were not Christians and still aren't, um, they went out for a long time and they spent many, many years together, but still um, would, would live together. They, yeah, and but they were still dating, as it were. They were still boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, whereas I think the way that Christians date is something more special, something more intentional, because we're looking towards marriage. Um, maybe a little bit like you've heard the old fashioned word courting. It sounds really old fashioned, but I think it just, it's all about this like special way of doing things because we are, we have this end goal in mind, which is marriage. Um, we've already looked at right marriage is great. And that's kind of why we want to have it as our end goal is so we can have this intimacy, this identity change that we can have this commitment. Um, so that's why we want to look towards marriage. So now to the fun part of the talk, um, boundaries. <laughs> I think, this can be one of the weirdest things to, to talk, well, not, maybe not weird, but I think very awkward. Um, and I can't honestly recommend enough talking to the person that you're going to date about this. As soon as you start dating, so that you're both on the same page, it's been like, for me, anything beyond whatever is a no-go all. We can do this, but this is not happening. Um, I've had those conversations before. It can be very awkward. I'm not going to deny that, but it just means that you're both completely on the same page. Um, so one of the big things that the Bible talks about is sex before marriage. And the girls have seen this meme before, uh, but it's a uh, sex before marriage. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> so um, very classy, I know, with my memes. So can somebody turn to some Bible verses for me? If you can grab a Bible or a phone or something like that. Um, 
Can somebody turn to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 8 to 9? Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. It all sounds a little bit scary, but what are those verses saying about sex before marriage? It's actually been like, sex is for a marriage context. It's, be it's better to marry. That doesn't mean that it should be the only reason you marry. Um, and like, it's talking about purity, um, which is a theme that runs throughout the Bible about like God calls us to be pure. And that doesn't necessarily mean just sexually, um, but it's, it's talking about being set apart, like being pure, being holy, is being set apart and living life differently to show that we are Christians. Um, and one of the ways we do that is to honor God with our body, <clears throat> which is by not having sex before we're married, because that's for a married context, because it's all to do with the two becoming one, which is, as we talked about with marriage. Um, and if you have, I think it's worth pointing out that there is no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. I think, obviously, it's not something that I would advise to do, but if you have, there is no shame. If you believe in Jesus, there's nothing that can separate you from him anymore. Um, so just wanted to put that in there. That's not, that's not, I don't hope it doesn't come across as me like being attacking or anything like that, but there is, there is no shame if you're in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. So if we're looking at what the Bible says about marriage, as we've just looked at, why is it best to save sex for marriage? Like we see in, in Genesis, if you if you go to Genesis 2 and want to have a look at this, um, that sex is this, it's it's this first thing that they do, is like they're the first marriage to talk about that. Um, that they they become two become one, and it's 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 solely intimate. It just like it's this deep intimacy, there's no shame in it. Like you don't have to worry about what the person thinks of your body or what have you it's all because because they love you because they've committed the rest of their lives to you i think it's this beautiful picture um anything else any other reason why it might be best to save sex before for marriage i think um it's a good discipline if you can't control yourself before you're married you may struggle to control yourself when you are married and mm. um, best to avoid it yeah. Um, and then it does actually say in the Bible that, you know, whenever we sin, we sin against God. But whenever you, whenever you <clears throat> commit adultery or fornication, which is sex outside marriage or to another married person, you actually sin against your own body. So it's mm -hmm. sin is sin, but it, it's really a marked, it's, it's very hurt. It's really, really hurtful to, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we have to exercise. That, that, that would be the two two things that I would chuck in there. If that's that's okay. No, no, yeah. And I think like we we exercise self control in all areas of our life. Like I know that there is like times where I don't need any more cake <laughs> because I know that it's better for me not to have that. Um, and it's not ever that God is trying to deprive us of these things, but He just knows what is best, and He knows this is the best place that it is. Um, I've seen so much hurt from people having sex before marriage um and like it just makes so much sense to me that god's like this is where it's best place because there's so much extra heartbreak so much extra like shame and disappointment if a if a if a relationship breaks up if they've already had sex um and that's me as a friend who's who's seen a lot of this so i think it's I find it true experient experientially through my friends as well as biblically. Um, oh, here's a meme that I forgot to show you earlier. Uh, no shame. And we've got Jesus' work on the cross. God's wrath. Me. <laughs> um, again, a cracking meme. Um, okay, what about other physical boundaries? We've got Christian kid being texted. Uh, my parents aren't in. Oh, no, I can't come over then. <laughs> um i think it's worth just being like it's it's not about how close you can get to the line um john was telling me a story um about this when we were talking through this he was like there's a story of a rich man and he's interviewing for a chauffeur and he was like the the first guy 
is he's, he's in this, this lovely very cool mercedes benz um a first guy he's like get, get me to the top of the mountain safely so the first guy goes as quick as he possibly can like showing off all the like handbrake turns and everything that you could possibly do and shows off gets them to the mountain in one piece which i was like all right okay thank you uh the second man comes and he hugs the close the side of the mountain he's so careful so slow going up and he gets to the top not in record-breaking time or anything not anything fancy but he gets into the top safely and i think it's probably obvious who the rich man were probably higher because just because the first guy was able to do it all up he wasn't doing it safely whereas the second guy was and i think it's just about yeah not it's, it's not about how close we can get tonight it's not how fancy we can do this it's just about sticking to those things um and yeah do with that what you will there's time to answer questions about that um i also know for for me um when i have to think about this it's what i know will tempt me to go further um i have to be like okay maybe this is cut off point not because it's wrong but because i know that i will want to do more um and also you might mess up with your boundaries and that's okay <laughs> i have <laughs> um and all you need to do is just repent turn back to jesus pray for forgiveness don't don't sit in that shame but keep to those boundaries once more um yeah it might you might not know exactly what your boundaries might be straight away but i think it's worth thinking about before you get into a relationship and when you're in the relationship and communicating that um i've also found that if i'm not comfortable sharing it with my accountability partner probably shouldn't be doing it um <laughs> Just, just a thought. Um, and as we've spoken about before, with the five love languages, there's plenty of ways of expressing your care and your love and your emotion for somebody else that doesn't have to be purely through physical touch. There's plenty of ways. Um, cool. Emotional boundaries, though. Here is a cracking meme. Uh, when a good-looking guy, <laughs> uh, I can't even read it up, pulls up in the church parking lot, <laughs> bumping a reckless love and all single girls are like oh, marry me <laughs> um i just wanted to add in that a su successful relationship might not end in marriage scary i know but i think i've i've had two exes and they haven't gone anywhere and that's okay it's, it's about figuring out if marriage is right for you especially with that person and also please don't pull the classic god told me we're going to end up together because that's not mostly not ever true um it can be very emotionally manipulative <laughs> and i find it's very easy to confuse god said with i want um so yeah be aware of that um at 14 people were telling me that i was going to marry the guy that i was going out with Clearly I didn't, so that was rubbish. Um, even at 18 and 19, people were like, <laughs> when are you going to get engaged? Uh, everyone in CU um, or in church was like, <laughs> so when? And I was like, no. Um, and I felt there was a lot of pressure on me to stay with my ex, even though I knew that he wasn't the right person for me. Um, because people were like, you're going to get married? And I was like, ah. um, Accountability. Again, a great meme. <laughs> let, me, let me read it first. Lord, if it's not your will, tell me no. The Lord says no. And that is my facial expression. <laughs> Every time. I actually cannot tell you how many times that is me. We've talked a bit about accountability before. What can people remember about what accountability is, what it looks like? That's, that's basically what it is uh, but the way so accountability partner 
is kind of like having some time with somebody that you trust um, to, to chat about things and be pointed back to God. Um, often my accountability partners say things that I don't want to hear but need to. Uh, the other day Sarah was like, Becky, you're being a mug. And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> um, someone once suggested me that there are sort of three things to look at in accountability. Um, and if you have an accountability partner, Bible, boys or girls, um, and your witness. So I just thought I'd go through those um, very briefly. Um, so you want to chat about the Bible? Everyone's here getting into relationships. You don't want to know what I'm getting into? The word. Be right back. Kind of be lame meme, but I thought Kermit kind of looked excellent in that meme. Um, I, so one of the ways that I keep accountable with reading the Bible is actually me and my friend Sarah, she's one of my accountability partners, um, she, we literally read the same Bible plan and I'm currently a day behind and she was like Rebecca, <laughs> um, but we, that's how, that's one of the ways that we check in to see how each other's doing, what we're learning and it's a really good way to, to not only grow your relationship with each other but also into like really looking at the Bible and really looking at what God has to say. Um, also a good time to check in like are you actually connecting with God are you are you reading your bible because there was a, there was a there was a large period of time that I wasn't and uh, she had to verbally slap me around the face and be like Rebecca if you, why why are you doing this why are you like this and I was like you know what because I'm lazy and I need to get over myself um that was my that was me anyway it's also a good time if you're talking about the bible is to talk about is your boyfriend or girlfriend a distraction from your relationship with God is God still your number one is he do you re realize or remember that he is more perfect or loving than your boyfriend or girlfriend could ever be where true satisfaction is found even good things like relationships can become a distraction I know that I have boy brain um and it's not the most helpful and can be very distracting um and it's why it's so important to spend time with God every day to remind ourselves that he's number one, to be excited by the Bible. Um, number two, uh, boys or girls. Um, oh yeah, here's a distraction meme. You better not get in the way of my, date, my loving Jesus. <laughs> um, crack in. Um, it's a good time to check in. Are you keeping to your boundaries? For me, I found it very valuable to talk with my accountability partner because if I don't want to talk to them, it probably means I'm doing something I shouldn't. Um, or have previously agreed isn't a good idea. Um, I think it's just good as well just to think through your thoughts. Sometimes just have someone to chat things through with. Um, I, as you can tell, I'm very long-winded and think things through probably too deeply a lot of the time. And sometimes I just need to sit and just talk at my accountability partner and just have them figure out my thoughts with me. Um, and number three, your witness. Um, why do you talk so much about Jesus? It defines who I am. If you haven't watched The Incredibles, go watch it. Excellent film. Um, the aim of our whole lives is to glorify God. So any relationship we get into should be helping us do that. Um, I know it's very easy when you're in a relationship to be kind of consumed by that one person to try and spend all of your time with them. Um, but actually, it's because we know that one person cannot fully satisfy us, like having friendship is still good, even if you're in a relationship like there are plenty of friends even who I know that I will go to more over some things than others or I know that some people have the same taste in me in musical theatre stuff whereas my friend Sarah does not but we bond over Korean food it's like that with a relationship we need to be keeping up with our friendships be spending time doing our hobbies the things that we enjoy both with Christian and non-Christian friends it's so important um and also sometimes we need to remind ourselves Maybe we should be sharing faith more than we already do. Maybe we should be opening up conversations or at least just sharing where th things are coming from for us. That's all a lot of information. In conclusion, I hope this doesn't sound scary. This is not meant to me just me just sitting here and being like saying, here are all the things that we should do. I don't want them to be rules. I don't want to, apart from the sex before marriage, which I would is very important. I don't want you to make you feel like ashamed or upset by any of this. 
the reason I'm telling you these things and the reason that I want to, to tell you this now is because I want to, to maybe challenge you on some things, but also because I know that through my own experience that I would not want you to have some of the same experiences that I've had or my friends have had. Um, I have, there have been times where I haven't stuck to my boundaries and that's not been helpful for me or my relationship with God or my relationship with the other person. There's been a lot of heartache that I've gone through and that's why i am been banging on about even doing a whole talk on pre-dating because I was like, it's so important who you choose to go out with. It's not just about attraction because I've done that and it's stupid <laughs> because it doesn't help and you just end up sad at the end. Um, that's why I'm talking to you about this. That's why this is important. Um, here's a Kanye meme to end on. When you're giving advice, um, but you <laughs> finish with, I don't know, just pray about it, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what I'd like to end on. I think that, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope this has been informative, but please take what I've said and think about it. Um, yeah, that's the end of the talk. <laughs>